into space. Stage one's a start of pressures. T minus 15 seconds. Falcon 9 is configured for flight. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Ignition and lift off. Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, carrying our stack of Starlink satellites to orbit. Nominal power and telemetry. Max-Q is the next major event coming up here shortly, which will now be throttling down the engines, the M1D engines on that first stage for. Max-Q is the maximum aerodynamic pressure that the vehicle sees on ascent. Vehicle is supersonic. And the weather, again, is looking beautiful, clear skies with an amazing view of Falcon on ascent there. Max Q. There's that call out that we have passed through Max Q. So in about a minute, we'll have three events happening back to back. That'll be main engine cutoff, or MECO, followed by stage separation and SES-1, or second engine start one. Now, MECO is where we shut down all nine of those M1D engines on the first stage that you see burning there on your screen. That's in preparation for the second event, which is stage separation. MVAC is chilling. Just heard that call out that MVAC chilling has begun. Now stage separation is where the first stage separates from the second stage. And first stage will make its way back to Earth and attempt to land on our drone ship, of course, I Still Love You, while stage two continues on its journey with the third event, second engine start one. That's where we light up that MVAC engine and it will propel the second stage along with the Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit. Just under 20 seconds or so away from those three events, that's MECO, stage separation, and SES-1. should be able to see MECO here in a few seconds with those nine M1D engines shutting down here shortly. And Miko. Stage separation confirmed. In back ignition and throttle up. And there we've had main engine cutoff and stage separation. You can see that from the ground tracking view there. We did have a good call out of second engine start one on the second stage. Fairing jettison confirmed. And we heard the call out for fairing deploy. And it looks like we don't have those onboard camera views, but we can still see the first and second stage on your screen there. Now, as a reminder, we will be attempting to recover the fairing halves today with our contracted recovery vessel named Sheila Bordelon. Acquisition of signal, Bermuda. And it does look like fairing separation was good. Now, as stage two takes our Starlink satellites to their targeted drop-off orbit, stage one will make its way back to Earth by executing two burns. 
The first is the entry burn. That's where three of the M1D engines will reignite. This helps to slow the stage down as it re-enters the upper part of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, the second burn is the landing burn, and this is the single engine burn that brings the vehicle speed down rapidly in order to land on the drone ship, and that is that center E9 engine, which is just powerful enough to slow the vehicle down to touch down on that drone ship. Second stage is following the nominal trajectory. And we do hear that call out that second stage is looking nominal. Unfortunately, we do not currently have any onboard views of that second stage at the moment, but everything is still looking nominal so far. If you're just joining us here, we did have a successful liftoff of our stage one from uh, Falcon 9 stage from Cape, Cana safe. Cape Canaveral SLS 40. And you're, uh, we're currently stage two. We do not have the camera views right now, but we do have confirmation that it is still uh, looking good. Again, our stage two is delivering our Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit. And that's our stack of 60 Starlink stage satellites. One, entry burn shut down. Second stage continues to follow the nominal trajectory. We just heard that call out that stage one entry burn was successful. And there you can see we do have our stage two camera view finally back. And it is looking good there with that MVAC nozzle glowing. And there's our stage one view back on our left as it uh, continues to cruise down, getting ready for the start of its landing burn in about 30 seconds here. You can see those uh, hypersonic grid fins of the first stage there on your left, and they control and help orient that first stage as it comes back down to stage Earth. One, transonic. Again, stage one uh, will be targeting landing on our drone ship, of course, I still love you. And right before landing, it will deploy uh, four carbon fiber landing legs. Start of terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. Have the start of stage one landing burn. So we'll burn will last about 30 seconds. You can see it coming down towards the Atlantic Ocean there. What a beautiful view from that stage one camera. Stage one landing leg deploy. What, a, what an amazing view. What an amazing view of that stage one landing burn. We got our cameras back just in time for that. And this marks our 79th successful recovery of an orbital class rocket. Yeah, and the seventh recovery of this particular booster. Expected loss of signal, Kate. We had an expected loss of signal there, but we- Nominal orbital insertion. We did have confirmation of second engine cutoff and a good orbit. And now stage two is going to coast in this orbit for the next 35 minutes or so. And while that happens, take a look at this animation showcasing where we are in the coast phase. And we'll see you back here at T plus 45 minutes for a second stage relight.